Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about mediator design pattern. Mediator pattern is a behavioral design pattern. The main intent of this pattern is to have an object that encapsulate interaction between a set of objects. It promotes loose coupling by keeping object from referring to each other explicitly hence lets you vary their interactions independently. And just like any other behavioral pattern, the main intention of this pattern is also same. It is about loose coupling between multiple objects. Now, as you can understand from the name itself, mediators means someone who mediates. So a classic example for mediator design pattern is a chat software where everybody connects to the chat software and when the chat message to each other, the chat software manages the communication between the two objects instead of the objects talking to each other peer to peer. But in today's video, I'm going to take a different example. Another example that comes in mind is before we had Uber or Lyft, usually we used to book cabs using a cab company. So there are multiple cab companies. And the way it works is when we book a cab, we call a call center. Someone in the call center responds to the call and then they figure out if a cab is nearby my area and then they send the cab to my house. That's how usually a call center based cab system works. Today we'll try to program this particular system. So for that, what we are going to have is we are going to have a cab class which will be representing a cab. We are going to have a passenger class which will be representing a passenger and then we are going to have a call center which is going to represent a call center. Now for the call center, we'll start with call center. So what is the responsibility of a call center? First responsibility is every cab is going to register itself to the call center. So we can have register and the registration is going to happen based on a cab. And the second responsibility is a passenger calling to book a cab. So we can have another method called book cab and which can have I passenger as the parameter. So now we can implement the cab call center. So let's first implement the register and the registration is going to be straightforward. So for registration, we need a dictionary of caps. So what we can do is we can declare a private read only dictionary of the name and the cab. And we can call it as caps. And this is going to be equal to new dictionary of caps. And on registration, what we are going to do is we can check if caps dot contains value of the cab. So if it does not contain, then we can say caps dot add. And here for the name, we can say cab dot name and the cab itself. So we need to create a name property in the cab. So let's go back and here, let's create a string name. That's one property. The other thing also we would need for a cab is its current location. And usually the current location is going to be in the form of a latitude and longitude. And based on latitude and longitude, we can find out the latitude and longitude of the caller and we can do some geometric calculation to find out how far the cab is from the location of the caller. But for simplicity, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to use an integer value so that we can do simple math. So here we can have something called current location. Current location can be again a get. And the third property that we need for a cap is if the cap is free or not. So let's say bull is free. So these are the three properties and then we can implement icab. 
and here we can have private read only string name private read only int location private read only bool free and then for name we can just send the name for the current location we can just send the location and for the free we can send the free so this is the three properties we are going to use for the cab so the cab is now added and then what we have to do is when a passenger calls to book a particular cab what we want to do is we want to go through all the cabs and the cabs which are currently free and then what we are going to do is we will be finding if the cab is within a certain radius of the passenger's location and if it is then we are going to assign the cab to the passenger and then we will let the passenger know that we have assigned it. So if we have to do that what we need is we need a private function so we can have a private bool is within let's say 5 mile radius. This radius can be a parameter. We really don't have to say five mile, but for the example here, I'm just figuring out five mile. And as I mentioned that we're using int as the current location instead of actual let long, just for the simplicity of showing the calculation. So we can have the cab location as the first parameter and then passenger location at the second parameter and in this method all we can do is we can do math dot absolute and we can say cab location minus passenger location is less than five so if it is less than five mile then the cab can be assigned so here what we can do is now we can come here and we can create a for each loop and we can say for each cab in cabs dot where the cab is free so for the cab we have the is free I have to do cab dot values dot where cab dot is free and then for each of the cab we can say if is within five mile radius and we can send the cab location so we can say cab dot location which is current location which is an integer and then we will send passenger dot location so let's go and create some of these parameters for passenger also so for passenger we are going to have name because the passenger will have a name then the passenger will have address and then finally passenger will have location and we can implement the i passenger here and similarly we can have private string name private string address private string location and here we can just send the underscore name can send the underscore address and here we can send the underscore location so this will figure out if the address of the cab is within five mile of the passenger and if it is then what it is going to do is where it's going to say okay because it is within the location it is going to assign the passenger to the cab so it's going to say cab dot assign we are going to create a assign method and it's going to take the passenger dot name and passenger dot address these two parameters and then after that it's going to inform the passenger so it will call a method called acknowledge and here it's going to send the cab dot name just to say which cab is assigned so we're going to generate this method in i cab generate method in i passenger and let's go here and let's implement this method 
And here the implementation is going to be simple. We're just going to have a console dot write line. So we can actually make things simplified and we can say console dot write line and we can say cab name sign to passenger and we can say the name of the passenger and address of the passenger as simple as that nothing fancy here and then similarly we can go into passenger we can apply the acknowledge and in acknowledge also we can have a simple implementation so we can have a console dot right line and we can say here for passenger name cab name name of the cab just simple print statement so now what is happening here is when we get to the call center when a call comes in to book we get the passenger info and then we we iterate through all the cabs and find out if the cab's location is within the five mile radius of the passenger and if it is we assign the cab and then we acknowledge the passenger with the cab name so this is the whole implementation and then now what we can do here is first let's do using mediator pattern dot demo set the namespace because we need this so first we can do is bar call center is equal to new call center cap call center and then what we can do is we can create the passengers so let's say we have a couple of passenger so we can say passenger one equal to we have to provide constructor to set the name address and location so And similarly, we have to do the same thing for cab. So let's create a constructor and we can have string name, location is free and we can assign the values in the constructor. So now here we can say passenger is equal to new passenger and for the name we can say best passenger one for the address we can say one to the street and for location we can say 10 let's say 10 is the location as i said just for simplicity i gave integer but for real life scenario this will be a latitude and longitude So this is passenger two and passenger two is a location of 25 let's say and then let's create cabs so cab one equal to new cab and the name is cab one and then the location let's say is equal to 11 and free is equal to true and then we can have cab two cab two location let's say it's 22 and this one let's say right now it's false it is not free now we can register both the cabs to the call center and cap 2 and then we can book cab for passenger 1 and passenger 2 and then finally we'll just do a console dot read line just to wait for the function to execute and stay there. So now if we run this application, what is going to happen is the mediator, which is the call center, will get a call from passenger one and passenger two. For passenger one, it will find out that 
cab one is available and it is within the range so it will assign cab one to the passenger and acknowledge whereas for the passenger two though the cab two is within the range but cab two is not free so it is not going to assign anything so if we run this we should see only one printout for passenger one and cab one as you can see cab one assigned to passenger passenger one and address is one two three and passenger one got an acknowledgement that cab one is assigned to the passenger and now if we make this as true so both of them are free now passenger two will be assigned to cab two and we can see the response is as expected so as you can see mediator pattern is very useful when we want to have this kind of scenario where we do not want the passenger to interact directly with the cab or similar situation so that's all i wanted to cover for today's video if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel please subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching this video